Are you a stock photographer looking to make a little bit of extra money when you're traveling? Or are you a world traveler that just discovered stock photography and you're hoping to supplement your income with stock photos from your trips? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a few ideas of some things that you can photograph while you're traveling, things that might make you some money through stock photography platforms and things that a lot of people forget to photograph. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. If you're new here, my name is Nicole Glass. I make tons and tons of videos about photography, including stock photography, and I would appreciate it if you subscribed to my channel and made my day. All right, so when most people travel, what do they take pictures of? They take pictures of beautiful sunsets, gorgeous castles, selfies of themselves, selfies with their friends, pristine, beautiful landscapes, the beach at sunset. You know, the kinds of things you take pictures of when you're in a beautiful place. However, it's very difficult to rank in these kinds of categories on stock photography platforms. It's not impossible, but it is difficult. And if you want to increase the chances of having your travel photos sell on stock photography platforms, then you need to think outside the box a little. So one thing you can take stock photos of when you're traveling is things that document the process of traveling. That might mean photos of luggage being loaded onto a plane, scenes from an airport, signs that illustrate the airport that you're at, photos of a fellow traveler reading a map or looking at his or her boarding ticket or checking his watch to see when the plane will take off, things like that. Obviously, if you have a friend with you, that friend can always be your stock model. But if you don't have a friend with you, you can always look around and see if there are any editorial photos that you can take during your journey. And if you don't know how to upload photos of properties without property releases, then you should definitely watch this video right here. Also, make sure to follow the laws of your country. In some countries, you can't just take pictures of people on the street. In other countries, you can do street photography. It's totally acceptable if there's some people in the background. So just be aware of that. All right, so now you've done what most people don't do, which is taking photos while you're traveling. Most people probably will leave their camera in their backpacks while they're running around in an airport feeling super tired. So you've already got a bunch of stock photos from your trip before even arriving at your destination. Now you're at your destination. Let's say you're at a beautiful beach somewhere on a tropical island and you just want to sit back, enjoy the view and take photos of that beautiful sunset. Well, those sunset photos are going to be really hard to sell, but look to your left. Maybe you'll see like a huge pile of trash on the beach, which is really sad. However, environmental protection is a really big issue and people often turn to, you know, places like Shutterstock to find photos that illustrate the concepts of pollution or the environment and things like that. So if you find anything that, you know, really stands out to you that might not be so beautiful, but illustrates a concept, then that is something you could take a photo of. And it doesn't necessarily have to be trash. Like that's just an example. Obviously there's a lot of trash photos on stock photography platforms already, but perhaps, you know, there's a specific beach with a lot of trash that, you know, hasn't been documented yet. And maybe somebody needs a photo of the deterioration of a certain beach. All right, next, now you find yourself at a very, very well visited tourist attraction like the Neuschwanstein castle or the Taj Mahal or the pyramids of Giza, something like that. Now, of course, everyone is going to take photos of these beautiful places as I'm sure you will as well. And you probably want to get the most Instagrammable shots, which means beautiful photos of these places. And it looks like you're the only one there because you know, it's all about the angles, but for stock photography purposes, you might also want to take a picture of what the reality of that place looks like. Maybe it's like tons and tons of tourists lining up to take a selfie 
and you can take a picture of that selfie line being formed. Because now you're not just showing that tourist destination, you're also showing what really goes on there. You're showing the concept of travel in 2019 or 2020. What does it look like to actually travel to these places? It's not all sunshine and rainbows. All right, so you photographed that concept. Next, look around. Look at the popular landmarks and perhaps the popular restaurants and things like that. See if there are any signs that you might wanna photograph. Like for example, a sign that says drones prohibited with that attraction behind the sign. Perhaps drones are a big problem in that area. Maybe there've been some like drone crashes there and somebody was forced to put up a sign and maybe you wanna photograph that sign with the attraction behind it. Something like that. I'm just throwing out ideas. Or maybe you're at a world famous restaurant and everybody goes here and takes photos of the food, but nobody actually has a photo of the outside of the restaurant on a stock photography platform. Just some things to keep in mind. All right, so transporting yourself back to one of those popular tourist attractions, like let's say Neuschwanstein Castle, you can photograph these places from a different perspective. Let's take the Neuschwanstein Castle, for example. I know I've mentioned this a few times because it's, it's coming to me more than the other attractions are. But there is a bridge that everybody goes to to take a photo of this castle. And everybody goes to that very same bridge and takes that very same photo of the castle from that bridge. And of course, I'm sure you will as well. However, you might wanna consider photographing the castle from a different perspective because that's how your photo is gonna look different from all the other thousands or hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of photos of that place. So just keep that question in the back of your mind. How can my photo be different? Maybe you're photographing a place that has only been photographed in the daytime, but there are no photos of that place at night with the stars behind it. Or maybe everybody goes to this place in the summertime, but nobody goes in the wintertime and you have like the only photo of that place when it's covered in snow. That's kind of like the overall thing you have to keep in your mind when you're doing stock photography while traveling is how can your travel photos be different than all the other travel photos taken in that location? What can you do? And you know, it's not to say that these you know, common photos and saturated categories are impossible to sell. Like it is possible. And I actually have a video talking about how that's possible, but it is much easier and much more profitable if you can think outside the box. And if you can illustrate concepts that perhaps other people have not illustrated or that are illustrated less often. I actually have a video, which I'm gonna link down below as well as up here on the screen somewhere, which talks about some of my travel photos that sell compared to photos that don't sell. And since making that video, I have taken a few additional trips. And from the photos I took on those trips, I can actually confirm that it is usually the weird, unexpected things that sell, not so much the photos of the uh, popular places. Like for example, in Vietnam, the photo that sells the most is actually a photo of an exhibit documenting the Vietnam War, not the beautiful travel photos of Vietnam. I have sold some of the travel photos, but, but that Vietnam War kind of photo, that's you know being downloaded more often. Anyways, I do not work for Shutterstock. This is just my personal experience, just some observations I've made from uploading travel photos to stock photography platforms, primarily Shutterstock, but also a few other stock platforms. So definitely let me know in the comments what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a different experience? I wanna hear your thoughts. Subscribe to this channel if you are new here and enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Definitely helps in the YouTube algorithm and also makes me really excited. Till next time.